Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange, Health Information Exchange. This is Lecture B. Objectives for this lecture are to clarify that HIE is both a noun and a verb, identify benefits, risks of HIE for patients, providers, government, and specific benefits for rural health, describe the push and pull methods of moving data and give an example of each. Identify benefits, risks of HIE for patients, providers, government. Contrast the difference between syntactic and semantic interoperability. Describe how the major advantage of the centralized model over point-to-point -point interoperability. Identify the various acronyms describing the structure of HIE. NWHIN, PCMH, ACO, IHE, FHIR. Understand the features to ask an EHR vendor, provide effective HIE. Discuss future trends for HIE. Electronic Health Information Exchange, HIE, allows doctors, nurses, pharmacists, other healthcare providers and patients to appropriately access and securely share a patient's vital medical information electronically thus improving the speed, quality, safety, and cost of patient care. Appropriately, timely sharing of vital patient information can foster better informed decision-making at the point of care and allows providers to avoid readmissions, avoid medication errors, improve diagnoses, decrease duplicate testing. Patient engagement is a major overarching goal as communication. Though health information exchange can help motivate patient behavior with managing wellness as a goal. A more formal definition of health information exchange, HIE, is the mobilization of healthcare information electronically across organizations within a region, community, or hospital system. In practice, the term HIE may also refer to the organization that facilitates the exchange. Health Information Exchange allows healthcare professionals and patients to appropriately access and securely share a patient's vital medical information electronically. The goal of HIE is to facilitate access to and retrieval of clinical data to provide safer and more timely, efficient, effective, and equitable patient-centered care. HIE is also useful to public health authorities to assist in analyses of the health of the population. At its simplest level, HIE requires the capability to push a message securely from one party to another. This involves sending a message or document, such as a laboratory result or an e-prescription, from one organization to another. Another metaphor would be sending an email message. This is considered direct, point-to-point, -point, or transactional exchange. In healthcare, the direct project launched in 2010 as part of the NWHIN, focuses on the technical standards and services necessary to securely push content from a sender to a receiver and not the actual content exchanged. A secure accessing of information that involves a query and a response describes the pull transmission. The query requests information about a patient and the response is the retrieval of clinical information about the patient or information pointing to where the clinical data can be found. Using a search engine, such as Google, to conduct a web search is an example of a pull transaction. Connect is a software solution that organizations can use to securely link their existing health IT systems into health information exchanges. The Direct Project, launched in March 2010, is a part of the Nationwide Health Information Network. It specified a simple, secure, scalable, standards-based way for participants to send authenticated, encrypted health information directly to known trusted recipients over the Internet. The Direct Project focuses on the technical standards and services necessary to securely push content from a sender to a receiver, considered point-to-point -point exchange. Direct Project participants include EHR vendors, medical organizations, systems integrators, integrated delivery networks, federal, state, and regional health information organizations, HIE organizations, and HIE consultants. 
Connect is another path to health information exchange. It is an open source, flexible platform for secure HIE using Sequoia Project standards and governance as a framework. The Federal Health Architecture, FHA, has made Connect available to the public free of charge, and it is open for continued software development, improvement, and contribution. For more information about Direct or Connect, visit the links provided here. Interoperable health records allow healthcare providers to access patient data, even when patients are unable to explain their medical history, such as when they are injured. In the event of a disaster, such as a hurricane, health information stored in electronic form is safer than paper records. Public health monitoring makes it possible to achieve syndromic surveillance and early alerts in the case of a disease outbreak or terrorist event. From the provider's standpoint, considering a patient's complete health picture can lead to improvements in care and fewer errors. This allows for responsible choices about treatments and medication, making certain new modalities won't interact badly with the patient's existing treatment regimen and reducing redundant services. For example, a provider able to access a patient's record can see current x-rays and lab test results so there is no need to repeat these services. Enhanced clinical decision support is a key component of HIE. Data collected through reporting is aggregated and analyzed to identify best practices that assist point-of-care decision-making. And because the records are stored electronically, there are safeguards in place that log the identity of those who access a patient's record, the date of access, reason for access, and the types of information accessed. Protecting patients' privacy is critical because HIE can increase the efficiency of delivering care. It has the potential to reduce costs. Another benefit of HIE is the ability to involve patients through access to their history and health-related educational materials. The consumer portals being established allow a new avenue for communication between providers and patients and patient engagement on all levels is an overarching goal of Health Information Exchange, HIE. HIE facilitates efficient data exchange for claims processing for payment coordination. Providers are able to bring about improved clinical outcomes when they have a clear picture of all of a patient's medical information to guide decision-making. When a patient is moved between facilities, the transition is eased by the electronic access of the patient's chart across facilities. The documentation of all previous tests and procedures eliminates the need to repeat them at the new facility. These efficiencies contribute to the overall patient satisfaction. From the perspective of government, Health Information Exchange shapes a greater understanding of the needs of patients in a given population. Because interoperability permits efficient data exchange, public health reporting and monitoring is improved, and agencies and providers have more timely access to the population health data. The trends seen in this data help to shape the development and prioritization of programs to improve the health of residents. District of Columbia, Department of Healthcare Finance. Health IT will be especially beneficial to rural America. In rural areas where distances between clinics are great and specialists are often few and far between, Health IT can give healthcare providers instant access to information they need to make timely, vital decisions and save lives. Decrease travel time for patients and their families. Enable rural hospitals to utilize remote clinicians, pharmacists, and staff members to improve and extend access. Facilitate efficient transfer to other facilities for vital services not offered locally. Facilitate efficient local care after intense care in a tertiary hospital by enabling patients to get care near their families and primary care providers. Patient consent is a concept of considerable debate. State law or HIPAA decide how patient consent is managed in each state. In an opt-out state, patients' data automatically is available to the HIE unless they opt out. In an opt-in state, none of your data is shared unless you opt in to the program. Some of the questions this raises. In an opt-in state, the patient has to specifically opt in to participate in health information exchange. In an emergency situation, for example, this can be problematic. If patient data is stored on an HIE, 
and the emergency provider has not been given specific consent from the patient, then they would likely not be able to access important information at a time of need. Often, a feature called Break the Glass is available that can allow access to this information, but only if it is in fact stored in the HIE. Some implementation of HIE do not store information where a patient has not opted in. In an opt-out state, the patient requests others not have access to their data. Data is still stored, but no one has access to it, except in a case of break the glass. Partial opt-out is hard to do technically, but easy to understand the reason some patients want it. For example, a pregnant youth may choose to withhold information from parents, or an adult in mental health counseling may want this information hidden from an employer yet may still want a future provider to know. The right time to talk about opt-in, opt-out is when advanced care is discussed rather than at admission. EHRs are designed with stringent security measures to protect health information. In this era of hackers and data breaches, health records are at the same risk that exists in other areas, such as defense or finance. The risk of identity theft is magnified with digital files because a breach can affect a greater number of records. Interoperable EHRs have great potential to enhance care, but they also carry potential for errors. Data entry by providers must be accurate and in the right fields. The system can provide checks and balances to make accuracy easier to attain. This information was developed by the Consumer Engagement and Education Collaborative of the Health Information Security and Privacy Collaboration, HISPC project, funded by the ONC. Government involvement in oversight of HIEs adds layers of complexity and additional time to make progress. All stakeholders, the federal and state governments, the healthcare providers and patients, have a role in building HIE capabilities and success. There are choices to be made as to which accountable care organizations ACOs, and HIE providers and their patients will choose to engage with. Finally, the technology costs are very high, and it takes time to sift through all of the priorities to implement what is needed and necessary versus what is possible. Although these risks are present, they can be mitigated very effectively in an HIE, often more effectively than paper-based systems. As we moved from Meaningful Use Stage 1 to Stage 3, the focus has shifted from information capture to the sharing of information with other providers, patients, and public health agencies. This is accomplished through interoperability, which involves exchanging key pieces of health information securely, with the goal being to obtain and share the right information in the right context. The Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, ONC, defined a common meaningful use data set for reporting for all summary of care records, care transitions, discharges, and patient access. This meaningful use common data set can be accessed by selecting the link on this page. For exchange purposes, there is an ONC-defined framework for a set of building blocks that support system interoperability. These building blocks include vocabulary and code sets, content structure, transport, security, services. To further refine our definition of interoperability, it revolves around the ability for diverse systems to work together. There are two levels of interoperability. Syntactic interoperability refers to moving computer systems from communication to exchange of discrete data. To effectively accomplish this, industry standards and vocabulary have been developed. Semantic interoperability involves data interpretation. Discrete data populates your flow sheets and organizes a series of isolated numbers so they can be charted and aggregated by patient. Organizing the data in this way is semantic interoperability, where the information is interpreted so it can be usable. For data exchange, semantic interoperability is of key importance. In attempting to achieve point-to-point -point interoperability, Many vendors utilize quick-to-implement, easy-to-replicate systems. Unfortunately, these become a nightmare to support, especially for the sites. Because of this, point-to-point -point is often seen as a chaotic model. 
The centralized model is generally preferred because if a system updates and goes down in the point-to-point -point model, 20 sites may subsequently be down. Some HIEs now have over 200 sites, so this could be a major problem. While this graphic tends to oversimplify the nature of the interoperability transactions and their complexity, it does highlight a scalable, modular approach to information exchange as well as a standards-based approach. In this model, if a lab system happens to go down after an update, the problem is isolated and doesn't affect multiple sites. Originally, when the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, also known as ARRA, defined government entities, the National Health Information Network was known as the NHIN, pronounced NIN. But then this was found to have different meanings, especially in international circles. The ONC converted NIN into eHealth Exchange, a public-private partnership to increase health information exchange, HIE, innovation in the private sector. The term NUHIN, Nationwide Health Information Network designation, was adopted. Integrating the Healthcare Enterprise, IHE, is a U.S. nonprofit organization established in 1998 to improve the way computer systems share information in the healthcare industry. The IHE standards are driving toward global interoperability. We will see this in the next few years. Already there are signs, as other nations outside of the U.S. have embarked on HIE initiatives. Why are we doing this? As history has shown, innovations such as the space race and microwaves are important for a nation to progress and modernize. Improving health care is motivated by a desire to protect our population from health-related issues and threats and, influenced by 9-11, to have an efficient system in place in the event of a national emergency. The U.S. will move to improve health care both individually and as a community. Health care is the new space race. This slide is from the IHE.net website a great resource with extensive information about health information exchange. Please take a minute to look at all the components. You will notice the focus is the common tie-in utilizing Internet-based technology. We could not have embarked on this effort 10 years ago. The new HIN is evolving as the technology grows in parallel. Look what you can do on a phone today that you couldn't in high school. A quick note on standards development. This slide is also from IHE.net, which is one of the more preeminent standards authorities. The point is, this work is not new, and it takes time to evolve. Industry representatives and those representing many healthcare disciplines are collaborating on an ongoing basis to create the structure and function to drive healthcare reform. Complexity. All of these groups need to come up with a common standard. Most vendors have incorporated the functionality of Electronic Health Information Exchange into their Electronic Health Record, EHR. To determine if an EHR is ready to exchange information, check with the vendor regarding your system's capabilities. Ask, what privacy and security features does your product currently provide and support? What form, forms of exchange does your EHR support? Which protocols, direct and connect? What are the costs associated with upgrading to include HIE functionality within our practice's EHR? What are the maintenance and monthly costs of adding this functionality? If the vendor does not currently offer HIE functionality, when do they plan to integrate HIE into the EHR? So, to review some basic terms, HIE is used as a verb, describing the process of the exchange of health information. It is also used as noun that refers to the entities that accomplish HIE. A Regional Health Information Organization, RHIO, pronounced RIO, is a multi-stakeholder organization that facilitates the transfer of healthcare information electronically across organizations and among stakeholders in a particular region. RIOs also support using clinical data for research and quality assessment and improvement. RIO stakeholders include smaller clinics, hospitals, medical societies, major employers, and payers. An accountable care organization, ACO, ties provider reimbursements to quality metrics and healthcare cost reductions. A group of coordinated healthcare providers forms an ACO, 
which then provides care to a group of patients. A patient-centered medical home, PCMH, provides comprehensive and continuous medical care to patients with the goal of obtaining maximized health outcomes through providing coordinated care through team-based models. FHIR. This relatively new term is spreading like wildfire. HL7 Fast Healthcare Interoperable Resource is abbreviated FHIR and is pronounced FIRE. It combines the best features of HL7 version 2 and HL7 version 3 and the Clinical Document Architecture, or CDA, and leverages the latest web service technologies. In a shift from the majority of HIE profiles based on SOAP, FIRE utilizes a software architectural style known as RESTful Web Services. This modular approach helps bring practical solutions to clinical and administrative problems. HL7 International makes FIRE freely available, and improvements to the standard, along with public comment periods, are still being made. These new and emerging standards will make FIRE easier to implement, yet will still be based on exiting CDA models. An overall goal is to reach a system of seamless, secure information exchange across diverse systems at the regional, national, and eventually global level. Then providers will have instant access to key patient data. In the future, HIEs as we know them today will cease to exist because the lines will blur between the hospital and vendor, and we will take a lot of the new HIN infrastructure for granted. State-designated entities, SDEs, will evolve into the type of regional entities that best fits the community. This will not necessarily be governed by geographical boundaries. In this unit, we defined HIE and interoperability, benefits and risks of HIE, basic terminology of interoperability and data exchange, highlighted the structure of HIE entities, shared some future expectations for HIE,